So, we're gonna talk about hook grip. Um, I pull hook in competition, about half my athletes do. This is Donovan, he's one of my athletes. He has a meet coming up in about two weeks. And so, um, we're just trying to iron out details like that. Uh, I'd say probably 90% of the time, no grip issues, but then sometimes it sneaks in. And those are probably the most infuriating thing because you, know, you don't usually think of your grip as a muscle to train. And I think with hook, you don't really need to train it like a muscle. I think uh, um, it's very difficult to improve your hook grip because really what you're using is friction uh, to keep the bar in place. And so getting a stronger grip won't necessarily help with that. It can, uh, you know, if you have very weak grip, but I think at a certain point, those, those benefits taper off. Uh, and a lot of times when you get grip tutorials, you'll get it from the guys who are great at hook grip who have monstrous hands, right? Like oven mitt type hands. And they're obviously not gonna have a problem because they can get so much surface area around that bar that they're never gonna have a problem with hook grip. But for the rest of us with normal sized hands or slightly larger than normal sized hands in my case, um, you, you have to be more uh, meticulous about it. So there are a couple strategies that I use for this. Uh, the first is taping your thumbs. This is not allowed in the USPA anymore, um, but I believe in most other federations it is. What you want to do is you want to get a very thin, stretchy tape. This is the average Lowe's type of tape. Um, and I really like this because it's textured, so it will help with that friction. Uh, and it's also very stretchy, which means that you can stretch it out and it's not going to be as thick. When it's thicker, right, that's essentially increasing the thickness of your thumb. Again, it goes back to the surface area. You want thin fingers, really, um, because then you're going to be able to wrap more of that flesh around the bar. So what you can do for this is when you set up, you're gonna set up so that about half the tape is actually past the tip of your thumb, and then you're gonna wrap it around just one revolution. No more than that because we don't want, we want minimal thickness, we just want that friction, and we want that little bit hanging off the top of it. All right? So I'll cut that off, and then I'll just pinch that off. So I'll have, and you can see what that's doing is artificially increasing the length of my thumb. So this way, when I go to wrap my thumb around the bar, I'm able to get that little bit of extra. This is not, not gonna make a big difference, but on your third attempt on a deadlift, it very well could be the difference between a miss and a make, okay? So that's the first step is you wanna make sure you're prepared. For that same reason, you wanna make sure you always use chalk with hook grip. Um, again, this goes back to the friction. Friction is gonna decrease the coefficient of friction. I'm not smart enough to physics to explain that. I'm sure somebody else can. So, we're gonna go over to the bar. When you set up the hook, you want to make sure you're essentially treating your thumb like a wrist strap, okay? So if you strap up correctly, then you should be doing the exact same thing when you set up for hook grip. Now, a lot of people go motorcycle handle on that thing and just crank their straps in. Um, I don't recommend that way. I think your straps should be as loose as possible because otherwise you're just losing tension while you're setting up. Same goes for hook grip, okay? You don't want to be hanging down there all day trying to set up. You want to get set up as fast as possible while making sure that your setup is also technically correct, okay? So when you set up, what you're gonna do, I like to actually shake out my hand a little bit to get it loose, and you can even pop your thumb if that's something your thumb does, right? Just to stretch it out, just to make sure it's loose. And you're gonna wrap around, you're gonna try and dig this part of your thumb, this part of your finger, not your thumb, this part of your finger, into the bar, and you're gonna stretch your thumb around. And then, you really only need one finger. I try to get as many fingers as possible around the bar, all right? So you want it just like that. Um, and you can see here my hand is a little bit internally rotated, and you can see my wrist is bent. That is what I want when I set up. And the reason for that is the biggest way you're gonna lose hook grip is when the bar moves on you. A lot of people will tell you to set up in the exact position that you wanna be in when you finish because they don't want the bar to move. However, in my experience, this only works if your bar path is exactly. If it is picture perfect, then yes, that is what you want. Most people do not have a picture perfect bar path 100% of the time, especially in a max effort. Bar. There's gonna be a little bit of variation there. The bar is gonna roll on you a little bit. And typically, it's going to roll away from you. So what I like to do is set up with just a slight amount of internal rotation around my finger and a slight amount of bend in my wrist, just like if I were doing a bench press. I don't have my wrist perfectly straight. It's almost perfectly straight, but not just a little bit. And that way, when I initiate the pull off the floor, if the bar is a bit away from me, my hand will naturally, right, because the bar is pulling it down, it's naturally gonna pull that grip into place. And that is going to help. It will compensate a bit for the fact that the bar tends to roll away from you if you get out of position. This is not a guaranteed way to improve your hook grip, but I think for most people, it's probably advantageous. 
if you are one of those technical masters that has a perfectly straight bar path every time, then by all means, start off with your wrist in the correct position that you want to finish in. Otherwise, I really recommend that you do start off with that little bit of slack in there so that when you pull it out, you're in a more ideal position.